Alrighty, you guys. This thing is covering my face. But anyways, alrighty, you guys. And we're back. This is the Jared Nicole Show every Tuesday from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. For those of you who are just now tuning in, we are going to go ahead and bring on our second guest today, Ms. Naja Jones. So I'm going to get ready and add her to the stream. Hello. Hey, how are you? How are you? Long time no see. Yes, yes definitely. But I'm super excited to have you on. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come on the show. Um, Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Just to give everybody a little background on me and Miss Naja's history. She was my boxing trainer and she was... <laughs> We a workout at five <laughs> in the morning. So, oh man, yeah. So she she's a I mean a phenomenal trainer, boxing trainer, and um, COVID of course, like ev like everything else got in the way and stuff like that. But I I do miss being in the <laughs> I do miss being in the ring and stuff. And hopefully we'll get back to that. But I did want to just go ahead and start off by letting you introduce yourself to everybody, and then we will get we'll get right into the conversation from there. Okay. So hey everyone, uh, my name is Naja. I go by Naj uh, just for short. Um, as she said, I was her boxing coach. That was one of the many things that I did. Um, I aspire to be an entrepreneurship uh, in different you know, aspects as far as boxing. I have my own t-shirt business. This is actually one of the t-shirts that I made. And uh, I'm definitely a, a big advocate for our community and just bettering our community as a whole. Right. Right, absolutely. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that was one of, I've seen some of the stuff, but I didn't know that was one of the t-shirts. I gotta get one. Yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I said, so great to have you on the show. Um, I know it's kind of gonna start off kind of light as we talk about, you know, you and the health and fitness, and it's gonna get a little, you know, heavy um, yes. for the latter half of the interview. So um, just to start off, what kind of inspired you and led you to get in the fitness industry and specifically boxing? What kind of piqued your interest? Got you. So as a kid, um, I, I was I was the tomboy growing up. Mm -hmm. I played all kinds of sports. Um, so just me loving sports in general kind of started as a child. Yeah. But boxing in particular, um, I got introduced to boxing through an ex boyfriend that he he used to box. So he took me to the boxing gym and that's when I, you know, first started to learn. And so from there, I just fell in love with the sport and started learning more about it and eventually became a coach for it. Right, absolutely. So I know when it comes to boxing, did you, whenever like you would talk to people, maybe meet random people or just family and friends, when you said you did boxing, would they kind of give you a look like, really? Like- Yes, very much so. They were like, boxing? <laughs> Why are you doing box? They thought I was really out fighting people. They were like, "You're gonna mess up your face." I'm like, "No, it's 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 it's, it's not that complicated. It's <laughs> it's just a different style of, of 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 working out that you know has so many benefits." And I have to explain it to them like, "You can box, like, Grandma. You can box. Come on, like I see." <laughs> It's the old women at the gym. Yes, everybody can do it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Because I just thinking back, I'm just thinking back to me and whatever I told people, you know, I was like, yeah, my boxing trailer. They're like, what? Jaira, wait, what? You have all people? Because you know, they see me growing up doing ballet, tap, you right. know, gymnastics, cheerleading, all that stuff. So they're like, you doing boxing? And I just feel like there's this narrative behind it that like women, can't do boxing and especially if you're like a girly girl you know what i mean right, that part yes you, you can't, yes you can't and then i also think too seeing women of color too you know who look like you and i in boxing yes. in general because that's actually what attracted me to you at first because i was like oh my god somebody who looks like me who's you know young like me she's doing this and i was like watching your videos and i felt so inspired and intrigued oh. and i yeah, and I was like, I'm going to reach out to her. And I sure did reach out to you. And then the rest was the rest. Yes, was here we are now. Like, yes. Right. <laughs> For you as a boxer, um, what is the mindset that it takes 
for boxing, even let's say, let's not even do competitively, right? But just in, in general, because they're like you said earlier, boxing, you don't always have to compete. And I think a lot of people, maybe that's where the, you're going to mess up your, your face comments and things like that came from, right? But people don't realize boxing is like a full body workout. So, but behind that, when you're in the ring, what's the mindset that a boxer has to basically have? So I would describe the mindset as uh, having calmness in a chaotic situation. Um, so it's, it's very more than just, you know, having physical abilities, but you have to take your mind to somewhere that is peaceful, you know, because you're in this chaotic environment. If your mind is chaotic, then things are going to go downhill. Right. Uh, but if, 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 if you're able to lock in and, and focus and be disciplined and just mm -hmm. control your mindset, um, that's something like just in boxing ring itself, but that is something that, you know, will follow you on your path of life in general. So whenever you're in a chaotic situation, you'll think back to boxing and go, okay, if I can do it in the ring, you know, I can calm myself down in this particular situation and move forward. So mm -hmm. that is definitely the mindset. Anybody who, who, who boxes or does anything competitive needs to have. I, I love that because like you said, you can just relate that to, to life and this past, like this year and then last year, you know, with COVID, like- Exactly. It was chaotic, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> we weren't staying calm, that's <laughs> what We were buying toilet tissue. We were losing <laughs> our minds. Exactly, we were freaked out, losing our minds, going left to right, like what? But I, I, I just think that's a good um, staying calm and like keeping calm in a category. I just think that's a good, like, I guess a motto or way of, you know, a way, um, what I'm saying, a quote, like that mm -hmm. you think of in terms of dealing with life. I, I love that you, that you said that. So for you, have you found a lot, have you met a lot of other women uh, boxers, or even have you seen a lot of young girls uh, doing boxing? Is that something you would want? I know your mother, your daughters to pick up. Have you thought about that? <laughs> yes, that's something I'll, I'll definitely train uh, mo both of my um, little girls to do. Me and my seven-year-old have already started. Oh. Um, yeah, so she she loves it. Um, and then, you know, I have a baby who's 18 months, so we'll definitely get her started. But I don't see a lot of women uh in boxing um women like you and me just your regular everyday right. women who, who 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 are able to box so that that is something that i do want to start in the in the future on, with my mm -hmm. plans uh to start you know like a women's team and and, and teach them that you know this is also self-defense this is you know stress mm -hmm. relief just give them the overall benefits you know of boxing mm, absolutely absolutely i love what you said about that because like you said you you especially even as um, when we're young, right? And kids are about to be in kindergarten. Parents are already thinking, I want my daughter to be a cheerleader or I want my daughter to play soccer. I want my son to play football, basketball. But rarely do you hear boxing, you know, kind of come up as this is what I want my children to do. And I know a lot of times, like you said, I think it's people thinking like, okay, I don't want my child like going to school bruised up, you know, on the face or it's too, they might think it's too much for like children, but I see little, little girls on Instagram, like <laughs> literally in different countries here in the U S like so quick and, and, and moving. And I think it's really key and important for people to not just look at boxing as something where it, it you have to compete and fight, but it can be a, a, a full body workout. So can you share with us a little bit about some of the benefits or certain parts of the body like from that you found when you were boxing that kind of helped you? Like <laughs> most definitely. So so like you said, boxing is full body. Like it doesn't look like it. Most people think boxing is is just with the arms, but no. I remember my, my first boxing class because I've, I've always worked out. So I was already, you know, physically fit when I um, started boxing. Uh, I was just a little overweight from having kids. But I remember after my first, you know, one hour session, the next day, my back was sore. My abs were sore. My legs were sore. And all I did was, you know, punch a bag. So I was like, oh, wow, this is this is very beneficial uh, for me physically, because that was something that I was seeking was um, a high intensity workout, but that something that just wasn't as simple as running or sprinting, you know, right. something, you know, more fun, I, I guess you could say. 
Um, and then as I started to pursue it more and more, that's when I noticed the other benefits of it, such as the stress relief. Like when, whenever we did that session for me and you, um, how you would go calm, calm, and then I would tell you, okay, punch it really hard, re release right. your frustrations. Right. And you know, that's how we ended our session. And you left feeling like, oh, wow, like today's going to be a good day. Like it's, it's very beneficial. And um, it, it also helps with depression and and it, it also fights dementia. Like it is, it's, it's, it's so beneficial. It has more non-physical benefits than physical benefits. And that's where I think the misconception is. People just see it as, oh, you're promoting violence when, when really you are doing the opposite. You are training your kids how to be disciplined, especially during chaos. Right, absolutely. So let's kind of segue into, cause I know, <laughs> boxing and then and then violence and then we're kind of going to talk here yes. about domestic violence so i did want to just kind of in the beginning um for viewers because they don't know if you can kind of share your story and then i'll ask you the question from there so just kind of starting off the biggest question i know most people have if they're on the outside looking in family and friends when they start suspecting right a loved one is in an abusive relationship they don't know what to do you know there's times where people they mean well and they're kind of like naj get out like you know don't talk to them blah blah, blah. but it's it, it's 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 much deeper and it's harder than that to to just say you know get out leave and oftentimes people you know the family members get get upset and frustrated because they don't know why the person is staying and things like that. So I just kind of wanted to let you kind of guide the conversation in the beginning with your story and then we'll go and answer those questions that I just mentioned. Gotcha. Okay. So just the background so as of why we're even talking about boxing and abusive relationships. Right. You know, <laughs> uh, so my ex-boyfriend who, um, you know, I was in an abusive relationship with him. He was actually a professional fighter. So we actually met at the gym. So we had that in common was, you know, an interest in boxing and, and he pursued that, you know, professionally. Um, so that's how, that's how the relationship started and that's how the bond started. Now, yes, everybody was telling me to get out and to leave. And, you know, for, for someone who, who has a loved one or a friend that is in an abusive situation and, and you keep telling them to leave, telling them that that person is terrible, to be honest, like, the more you push a person to leave, the more they're going to find reason to stay. Um, and if you start to see that that behavior, which is what happened to me, it, it it came in between the relationship between me and my family, me and my mom. We stopped talking for a while um, because I was in this relationship and, and she did not approve of it at all. And young and naive, you know, I, I, I fought her because what people don't understand is that there's a there's things going on inside the home that those outside people are unaware of. So it's like, I see the good side in him too. And that was the side that I only chose to focus on. So it's like, although people are telling me that he's bad and, and I need to leave, um, that just really pushed me to stay more. What my mom did for me, honestly, was she prayed for me every night and I did not know. My mom prayed for me, my, my sister prayed for me. So I strongly believe in the power of prayer. So if, if, if someone won't come out of that relationship, ooh, pray for them, pray for them. Mm, mm, my gosh, I just can't even imagine. I think what you said was really key how people, when they're in abusive relationships, they see all sides of their abuser, essentially. Like you said, he, you know, I, I mean, I don't know exactly what he, you know, said or, or did, but just to give maybe kind of like a general example, um, not to speak on, I don't want anybody to think I'm speaking right, you know, on behalf of people who are survivors, but um, just, you know, like you said, maybe he had an outburst or something like that, but then maybe the next day he takes you to dinner and, and buys you flowers and, and, you know, is really affectionate and really sweet. And then, you know, maybe things are good for that rest of the week. Then the next week something happens and, mm -hmm. and yeah, and triggers yes. him. It's a cycle. And like you said, it, people, 
people do want to believe in the good of that person, I think, right? We, I mean, even outside of relationships, I just think in general, we have a hard time when there's people that we love, we, we give them another chance and another chance and another chance to overlook all of those things because we, we simply love them and we care about them. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, they also didn't want to, and please, I would love for you to chime in on this. They also didn't want to um, lead their abuser because they felt like their abuser didn't have anybody or their abuser were broken. So if they left yeah. them, they would be abandoning them and then the abuser wouldn't get the help that they need. Was that, that Yes, that is, honestly, that is how we even got into a, a, a relationship. He was in a place to where he, he needed transportation to, you know, go to practice for his fights. He had dreams and aspirations of, of, you know, being, you know, successful in the MMA. And then, you know, I saw potential in him. I saw his drive and determination. Mm -hmm. And so me being the person I am, I just really wanted to offer a helping hand. And so I knew he really didn't have, he didn't have family here, anybody. So I felt like if, if I left him, then it, it would destroy him. But I wasn't, I was disregarding the fact that by staying, I'm destroying myself. And so mm. once that came across, I had to decide, are you going to take care of your, yourself and your kids? Or are you going to keep putting your energy um, in, in, into this man? Mm, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So for you, what is that? What was that breakthrough moment? Was it, was it one moment? Was it a series of moments that made you just kind of say enough is enough? I have to get out. You know, what? What kind of change did you and like you said, you just said you realize, you know, you and your kids or are you going to continue to put energy? But did something specific kind of happen to make you be like, I can't keep doing this? Most, most definitely. So as you know, um, I did have his baby. I ended up getting pregnant with him right. um, throughout my pregnancy. Um, it was it was still, you know, pretty much the same. Um, and and just for the record, uh, what I also wanted to say as far as, you know, me being inside an abusive relationship, I don't want people to think that he was physically abusive all the time because he wasn't. There was really only one physical, physical incident that involved me calling the police. But the majority of the abuse did come from mental abuse, you know, sexual abuse and, you know, financial abuse. And those are the types of abuses that get ignored the most because they're not often looked at as abuse. So that that was the majority of the the uh, kind of abuse i was experiencing when it became physical that's when i had you know that's when i said enough you know is enough now my life is in jeopardy mm -hmm. um that's yeah. that's what made me open my eyes and there was an incident where i was six months pregnant and uh we got into an altercation we were already broken up at the time but still living together um he ended up shoving me a couple of times and i ended up falling onto my stomach and my placenta ruptured um, and so later that morning, um, you know, I ended up calling the police. I left, went to go stay with my parents. Um, I ended up going to the hospital later that morning because it happened at two, like two o'clock in the morning. Uh, I went home, got some rest, went to the hospital at, at 10 o'clock in the morning because I was having discomfort. Um, long story short, I ended up having an emergency C-section that night uh, because my placenta had ruptured from me falling onto my stomach. Oh. And uh, they said, had I had I came in, you know, the next day, I, I, I probably me or the baby probably would not be here because wow. I, I had lost so much blood. I was 10 milliliters away from going into a hemorrhage. Um, so I was I was very thankful to have, you know, gone to the hospital through a friend's direction, actually. Of, of, I, I went to go visit a friend. I have entrepreneurship friends so I was going to go pick up some t-shirts and he really encouraged me you know yo fam go get checked out just for the mm -hmm. record um so i did because I, I was just you know feeling discomfort not necessarily you know pain right so I was like, okay i'll go get checked out just you know just to say i went checked out and just to put it on on the record and and that's when i found out my situation was a lot worse than what I had perceived, which was also like a metaphor for the entire relationship that, that I was in. You know, mm -hmm. I was in a lot deeper, you know, a lot, a lot more trouble than I had than I had thought. So mm -hmm. once I that like I have not seen spoken to him, you know, since that day. You know, that was mm -hmm. November twenty fourth of two thousand nineteen. Um, so ever since that day, ever since I you know gave birth to you know a healthy baby, right uh, at twenty five weeks. Um, 
you know, I, I have not been in that situation. That is what, you know, that basically forced me out because, you know, mm. he ended up fleeing, you know, running because he, he knew he had messed up. Right. Uh, so I was really kind of taken out of that situation by the grace of God. So mm. that, that, that is what pulled, pulled me out. And I've been thriving ever since. Wow. I, I'm, I'm so happy to know that you're okay. I'm so happy that your friend pushed you and was like, no, you need to go get checked out. Yeah. Cause like you said, I can't imagine, um, thank God you're here with us today. And I just, I just wondering, and I know viewers are probably curious, you know, if there's anybody in this situation and, you know, they do have a child with their abuser, you know, how can they stay? Cause I can only imagine, obviously it's not, it's not easy, right? I'm trying to raise your daughter. And like you said, you haven't seen or spoken to him since that incident. And I know it's gonna probably um, be a really hard conversation as she gets, you know, as she gets older and, you know, wants to know, or if he, um, I don't know if he's tried to even reach out to you or apologize or, or things since then, but wow, oh uh, gosh. That's devastating. Um, what do you kind? What do you kind of do to keep yourself upbeat and 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 just you know motivated, encouraged? I know you said you've been thriving ever since, but what has it like taken? What did your journey to healing look like, essentially? Wow, it was it was a long journey. Um, it was it, it was it was hard, um, but one of the most important things what I, I began to get closer with God and into my relationship with him. And I started to, you know, see the purpose of that situation and, and what it has done for me. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as like me healing and, and, and stuff like that, like I have forgiven him. I forgave him a long time ago. I'm not angry with him. I don't hold anything against him. I want to see him succeed. You know, I don't want to paint this picture of him as, you know, this terrible person. Right. Because, you know, in, in all honesty, he's not. He's he's not a terrible person. He's just a terrible person to date. He's terrible with, with women. Um, he's 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 kind to everybody else, but if you are dating him, you're gonna have you're gonna see his worst side, basically. If if you are in an intimate rela re relationship with him, you're gonna see his worst. If you are not, you're gonna see his best sides. And I saw both. So I, I don't want people to, to take away that, oh, he's, you know, just terrible, terrible person because I honestly, deep in my heart, do not feel that way. Um, I think he's, you know, terrible today. And as far as, you know, explaining this to my daughter as, as, she, get, as she gets older, because I know she's going to ask those questions, right. I'm just going to have to be extremely honest with her. I'm going to explain to her who he is, um, why he hasn't reached out, and if she wants the opportunity to reach out. You know, I, I may end up helping her in that situation because he does have a, a, he does have other kids and okay. and, you know, he, he he does try, you know, with, with them. Um, he has not tried with me or or with her, has not asked about her or has not seen her. Yeah. Nothing. But like I said, I don't want to hold anything now against him. I don't know what the future holds. I, I don't know what God has in store from him. So if, if, if it does come so that, you know, he can be a part of her life. I won't stand in the way of that. Right, absolutely. And I think that's, woo, it's so like courageous of you to even do that. Cause I, I can't imagine, um, I can't imagine, you know, people who, who feel like they can't get over what happened to them, right? And I'm saying, and I've never been through that. So I can't say I know healing looks different for everybody, right? Um, there's there's a lot of times there's there's people they they want to forgive, right? But they just can't get past what the person has done to them. So for you, in terms of forgiveness, I know you said you got closer to God, but how if there's anybody who is who went through an abusive relationship right now or is a domestic violence um, survivor and they're struggling with forgiveness, what would you say to them? How would you encourage them to just really let it, you know, not, not necessarily forget, right, completely what happened, but to be able to forgive that person and fully let them go? Because I, I can only imagine for you, it probably was kind of freeing when you did get to that yeah. 
to, to like kind of relinquish all of that. So what would you say to anyone struggling who maybe they've been out of the relationship for like years now, but they still, you know, hate that person's gut. Or maybe the person, maybe they don't feel bad for them, right? Maybe they don't feel, maybe they're still, you know, uh, unfortunately abusing other people or, or don't care, but what would you say? So yeah, that, definitely anybody who is who, who is struggling with you know forgiving anybody anybody who did them wrong, not just an abuser, anybody who did you wrong in general, you know, think about it like this: when you hold on to that anger and you know and to that bitterness, you know, think of it as extra weight. You are take you are you are carrying extra weight that is holding you back. That you can you have the ability to just toss that weight off of you and live your life freely. But it's like you're trying to move forward in, into life and you can't understand, you know, why things aren't happening for you the way you think they should. It's because you have this trail of weight that is pulling you back while you are trying to go forward. So for I didn't forgive him for him. I, you know, I didn't reach out to him and say, look, I forgive you. Things are, you know, kumbaya. No, I looked into the mirror and I said, you know what? I, I forgive him. You know, I forgive him. I'm going to move on. I'm going to know my worth. I'm going to look at this situation as a lesson and, and take what I have learned and, 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 and take what it has taught me and take the good part of that and leave the bad and take the good parts with me and, you know, build my empire with. But I think some people are trying to hold on to that bitterness and wondering why they, they can't, you know, thrive and persist in life. And that is the reason why. Uh, so, so definitely you, you really just have to let go and look at the situation as, okay, what did you learn for me? That situation really helped me with the foundation of who I am as a woman. I'm not the same little girl I was when I was with him, but you know, the foundation that I had as a woman, the confidence that I have, you know, I now know my worth. I know what I want in a man. So right off the bat, I know not to ignore. Like it, it, it taught me a lot. It gave me a lot of qualities that I did not have as a little girl. So I could like I, I'm not that same girl. If you knew me back then, you don't you don't know me now. Uh, so you you really just have to take really look at the situation and ask yourself what are the what did I learn? What did this do for me? And mm. focus on that and take that with you and leave that dead weight behind. Mm. Wow, that's a, that's oh my gosh, that's so inspiring. Yeah, that that's the power of forgiveness <laughs> yeah. right there. Yeah, that for sure in terms, because like you said, making, taking the focus off of that person, like you said, it doesn't even have to be someone in an re abusive relationship, but taking the focus off of that person and their actions and bringing it towards you. And now, like you said, you're thriving, you're confident, you know your worth, all of that stuff. And we can feel it. I can feel it. <laughs> so, so, so for, 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 for someone Cause like I said, for someone who's not, um, who's never experienced or been in an abusive relationship or on the outside looking in, a lot of times when you guys um, mention survivors or um, victims will mention um, there were red flags that I, that I ignored or there were certain personality traits that I ignored. Can you please elaborate and share with us some of those things where you know, um, maybe they kind of were red flags to you or you notice like, okay, maybe he's got a little bit of uh, a temper or, you know, or um, maybe he kind of has a tendency to like control, like what are some of those things that you can share with us? Cause like you said, it wasn't just, you know, just physical, just, you know, hitting or pushing and stuff. You said there's mental, there was financial, there were others. So what does that look like? If you could give us like maybe concrete examples or kind of paint us a picture. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there, there were a lot of red flags in the beginning, a lot of red flags that I saw and I was like, oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm colorblind, I, I can't see. But, uh, <laughs> definitely a lot of red flags. For example, like you said, the temper, uh, so, you know, the, the temper was, was one of the first things that I had, had, had noticed. Um, and it's like a switch to where it's like, he's cool one day. And then it's like, next day he's just this completely different, different person. Like he can turn it off and on, um, just his background and, and, and his background in general, like he, you know, was involved with a lot of drugs and, and smoking and just hanging around those kind of people in that environment. So, you know, that was a red flag. Uh, my mom, she ran his background check. 
a bunch of red flags right there. Um, you know, previous arrests, previous, you know, instances with the police. So, you know, I, I definitely knew, you know, what, you know, what he was, you know, and then as far as how he was with women and then uh, very flirtatious and he, he had a sex addiction. So um, that was a red flag that I had saw. He he was very manipulative. So, and, and that is something that I also noticed, you know, early on. So I saw all the red flags and that is another thing why I had to forgive him was because forgiving him was also like forgiving myself because I saw the red flags way before I got pregnant. I saw the red, red flags before we moved in. And, and it's like, I refuse to acknowledge them and refuse to leave. Um, and so it's like, I kind of had to look at myself and be like, okay, I am partly responsible for everything that I went through with him because it's like, I knew, you know, what I was getting myself into, but it's like, I, I chose to ignore it. So I had to take some responsibility too. Another red flag that I think that women need to um, pay attention to is, his past relationships that that he's been in and the relationship that he has with his mother if, if those relationships you know are very rocky that you know that is a red flag that you need to investigate because if if, if he can't you know have a good relationship with his mother that kind of sets the tone for every woman that is going to enter into his life and you know i had to really really dig deep and say i can't raise a man you know he there were some things that did not get crossed off the list when he was a boy. And so, you know, those things are, you know, transferring on into his relationship with women. And I said, I don't have to be the recipient of that. I don't, I don't have to take that. I deserve better. You know, even though it's, it's not, it, it's partially, you know, not his fault the way he is, he is. But at the end of the day, it's like, although I can understand it, I don't have to accept it. And so once mm -hmm. I realized I don't have to accept it is, is, is when I, Move, moved on and move forward. Wow. What is it that you think, what is it that you want the world, people in general to understand about domestic abuse? Because I know I see it all the time on Facebook. Someone will, you know, post their story. And um, I see it actually a lot more from men will comment comment and be like you know i don't understand why women stay i don't understand why they say the red flags are there just leave or they're like if i would have known that i would have like came and tried to beat him up you know just just things like that but what do you what do you want people to understand and know and you feel like it's kind of misconstrued so definitely the the big question as as far as to why do we stay Honestly, as, as sometimes we don't even know because the perception is different. So what you guys are seeing is different from what I am seeing. So it's like when, when people are saying, why did you stay? Just like we talked about in, in the beginning was because I was focused on those good qualities. And, you know, I fell in love with, you know, the potential that I saw in him, not who the man he was at that moment. But it's like I saw what he could be, you know. I was like, oh, well, if he only did this and everything would be perfect, trying to get him to do that one simple thing, you know, treat me right was, you know, a, a, a big hurdle that he could not get over. And so it was right. like, I continue to stay and give him chances, you know, hoping that he would get over, you know, and, and change, but it never happened. And honestly, I, I really don't know why I stayed. Like, I, it's, it's, a, it's a question that I, I can't answer. It's, it's love is a strong emotion. And so right. it's like when you it's like think about your child when you have a child who is acting out and people are like why don't you just kick them out the house I can't because that is my beloved child I can't put my right. child into the street so you right. know like me leaving him felt like me you know putting someone I love onto the street and it was just really hard for me to do that and and I I took on that abuse for the sake of him and mm. it, it, I can't say it was the right decision I can't say it was the wrong decision but I can't say I I stayed way too long. Definitely. Right. Uh, I'm glad I got out. I stayed only a year. I talked to some people. They say, oh, I was in an abuse relationship for seven years, for 10 years. So I'm right. going to have gotten out in a year. Right. So definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, there's people who, you know, there's people who might be listening now who are, you know, in one and it's been 15, 20, you know, 30 years and they just don't have the courage um, to 
to, I don't even know if I really want to say the courage to, to leave. Cause that can kind of be taken um, in a negative way, but just it, it's, it's, it's hard. And, and it's definitely a lot. And like you said, I think it makes it even harder when you do have the people obviously who know you and raised you, they're pushing you towards getting out, but really like you mentioned earlier in the beginning, it only pushes you towards that person. I think people, are more, you know, they become more protective at that place. Yes. And yeah. then I do want to highlight the fact is also too, you know, Naj, you're an adult. So it makes it even more challenging. You know, parents, if they have children who are teenagers, right? Or in high school, you know, they can kind of, not all the time, but they can kind of, you know, tell them you're not seeing him anymore. Yeah, they can intervene. Like, yes, definitely. But when you're when your daughter, when your son, they're adults, you you can preach to them all you want, but you can't force them out of an abusive or toxic, you know, relationship, friendship, whatever it is. A lot of the times you, you can't, and it makes it even more challenging. So one of the things I, I wanted to ask you is when you spoke about earlier about like um, the different types of abuse and relationships, the mental, financial abuse, um, Especially financial abuse, because that stuck out to me. Because I, I rarely, really hear people when they say I'm a, you know, domestic abuse um, survivor talk about like the financial implications. So, can you share a little bit of what you mean by financial abuse? That here's you uh, here's an, an example of you know financial abuse, and and it's and it starts with the root of manipulation for one. Okay. So. Someone who's like me, who, who's who's very kind and, and giving, that's just me naturally. Okay, so he, he was very, very manipulative and fed off of, off of that quality of me. So whenever we moved in together, for example, whenever we moved in, it was, you know, agreed that he would cover rent, I would cover the other stuff. But okay. as time went on, it was like I was paying all of the bills. I was paying, you know, for everything. Um, I had a car that we shared, you know, I was paying for the car. And it wasn't so like he was like forcing me to give him money, so to say, but it was like I was struggling financially because of his manipulation. And, mm -hmm. you know, that is a form of abuse because they are doing it intentionally. So and, and, and even helping him with, you know, his career and stuff, you know, I would, you know, give him money for that. And so that really made me struggle, you know, financially to where. Uh, once I lost my job, that's when it really shed light on the situation because I was working a job to where I could handle, you know, right. I, I could I could handle it. I, I was, you know, making really good money. Well, I eventually ended up having to leave that job because of the abusive situation was causing so much anxiety and depression that I could not work. Um, so I, I ended up having having to quit because I was about to get fired. And and once it really opened my eyes to see how he really doesn't contribute anything financially and I'm in this big hole because of him, right. you know, that is what I consider financial abuse. Right. Absolutely. So in terms of the manipulation, was it kind of like outright, is it, is it a situation where they're outright, like, if you don't give me money for this, or if you don't pay this, like, do they, th like, was he threatening to leave you? What, what, what kind of like, how did that how did that happen no he never really threatened to leave me it was always like a um okay like we made an agreement so he knew that i that i wasn't going to you know get this place with him unless he agreed to pay you know the rent so he was agreeing to do something that you know he wasn't going to do and then inside of the relationship you know, okay. he would say, oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to pay you back or, you know, yeah, I'm going, I'm going to do, it was filled with empty promises that I was like, okay, I can count on him to do something when in reality, he's just telling me what I want to hear so he can get that transaction, you know, at that particular moment, knowing he wasn't going to, you know, put anything back into it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was kind of the, the, the my situation for it. Gotcha. I understand. So now, you know, it's, it's, it's been a, over a year, right? Yes. It's been a little bit over a year. Why do you feel like it's so important for you to speak out and, and share your story? Cause um, I know there's a lot of times where people who are in um, 
abusive relationship, sometimes your close family and your friends, they won't even know it for years and years and years. And even after if they've left the person or they divorced, you don't know that they were in an abusive relationship per se. And then they come out down the line, right? And they tell you like, yeah, I was in a abusive, excuse me, I was in an abusive relationship or abusive marriage. And people are like, what? Oh my, every time I saw you, like, oh my God, I had no idea. I never yeah. would. I never would have thought that. And so people are left like shocked, you know what I mean? And then people are thinking like, why did like, oh my God, like, why didn't you tell me? Like, you know, I would have done something. I would have helped you. I, I, they feel bad for not knowing. And, and, and a lot of times it's hard for um, survivors to even speak out and share their story. I know one, sometimes people are afraid because sometimes the abuser will still find ways to try to get to them and things like yeah. that. But for you, you're you I guess for me it was like uh it was it was really hard for me to really come out and seek help because of the reputation that I had as a person I had the reputation of oh wow Naja is you know hardcore she doesn't take anything from nobody so it was really embarrassing and, and humiliating to even come out and say guys I've been putting up I've been putting up with this you know and I'm always preaching about know your worth do this like I was a very big advocate and then for the first time, I find myself in a situation to where I, I'm questioning my work. And, 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 and that was really, really changed, you know, you know, my aspect of it. So now I really want to share my story, not only for the people who feel like they are embarrassed to even come out and say it, but for the people who, who have loved ones that, that because I also had red flags. There's red flags on both ends. There's, there's red flags for the abuser. And there are red flags for you know victims of any type of abuse and i had those red flags all over me so i i want to be able to share what those red flags are for for someone who may have loved ones experiencing something and you can't figure out what it is and then also for the person who was in that situation who was crying out for help without saying you know help me okay. um, so so for me for for my red flags that that people saw but they just kind of dismissed was um I was really depressed. Like I, I suffered really, really bad from anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. And that like I experienced that for the very first time in that relationship. So at that time, I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what those feelings and emotions so were myself. And so I I had I had it started with the loss of appetite. I stopped eating. And I thought, oh yay, my, my diet's working. I don't crave sugar anymore. Well, oh. eventually it, <laughs> I was like, I'm doing good. And so I started losing weight. I was like, yes, things are working. Well, it it I it began to happen excessively at an excessive rate to where, okay, it wasn't just sugar. Now I can't eat breakfast. Now I can't eat lunch, dinner. I'm not hungry at all. You know, the thought of food makes me nauseous. I, I'm losing 60 pounds in three months. Like I am and I'm a I'm a pretty thick girl. And so I knew there was a problem was when my butt was flat. I was like, okay, I need to go to a doctor. Something's not right. And I didn't, I really did not know what it was. And then I, I developed I, IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome, mm. to where I would just get these pains in my stomach. And I mean, I was on my hands and knees just crying with these sharp pains of just nauseous and just sickness. And oh, I'm in and out of the hospital. They're telling me we don't know. And then finally a doctor tells me to go see a, a gastric person. And he looks at me and he says, is there, is there a dramatic change that has happened in your life? And I said, yes, I'm, I'm in this toxic, toxic relationship. And he said, all of your symptoms are, are signs of severe depression. Um, now, at that point, I kind of sensed that, okay, I, I think I'm experiencing anxiety and depression. Um, and so I started looking into more of that. And then the panic attacks started at work where I would just get so anxious and just start crying for, for really no reason. And I, and I couldn't work, I would have to leave. And so that's when I said, oh my gosh, like there, there is something really wrong with me. And the worst part is, it's like, if I go to the doctor, based off of my charts and my blood work, I was the healthiest person that they had seen in there. But, you know, I'm in there crying, I'm weak, I'm, I'm, I'm brittle, you know, and, and that is why I, I preach about, you know, my, my faith, because at that moment, that is when I really had to say, Lord, help me. <laughs> I right. am yeah. and the doctors, the doctors cannot heal me. And so for, for, for anybody who, who is suffering, just, just know you are not, you are not the crazy one. Like, like, yes, it is that toxic relationship that is making you sick. And until you realize and accept that you will never be healed. Once you realize what the sickness is, you have to treat that sickness. And the sickness was him. He was the disease. 
you know, in my life. And the doctors, can, <laughs> there's no test for that. <laughs> the doctors right. can say, it's your boyfriend, it's your boyfriend. <laughs> So, you know, I, I really had to look in the mirror and say, wow, like he he is I was in a lot deeper than I had thought. Um, so when when I'm very big on health. So when, when my health was at jeopardy, I think that's when I when I broke up with him. But I did not leave. It was right. you know, the life for the incident that made me leave. Absolutely. But definitely. Those are the signs. And then um, what was the other? So I had the signs for the, the person that was. Um, being abused. Yeah, being abused. So yeah, those, those are like, you have to watch out for those for those symptoms of people. Change of behavior. You know, mm -hmm. I, I became distant. Pay attention when your friends and loved ones become distant because there is a reason. I only became distant, you know, to my friends uh, in two situations. One, when I got pregnant in high school because I was going through a lot. I was, you know, pregnant at 16. And then when I was in an abusive relationship. So it was just very, you know, traumatizing. So People were asking questions like, hey, you know, you looking skinny, girl. Like, you need to eat. And I'm like, I can't. <laughs> I, I, I wish I could, but I, I can't. And so th definitely, like, loss of weight, people who, you know, are distant and, and not doing the things that they normally do, um, change of behavior. My boss noticed it. I think my boss was the only one who really said, you know, you, you need to get help because she wow. saw it. She was, a, she was a mother. I think she was like in her 40s or 50s. So she knew she was she a mother. Knew. She had wisdom. So she was like, baby girl, I know this guy. She knew because like he had brought me flowers. He sent me edibles to my job. Wow. And so everybody was like, oh, my God, cool. And my, right. boss said, my boss said, what did he do to you that made him send you flowers? And I was like, oh, wow. She she knows. Mm -hmm. She knew right off the bat. Mm -hmm. So. Be my boss. <laughs> Pay attention to people, and and if someone needs help, it's okay to ask them. Hey, like, is everything okay at, at home? Don't ignore it. We have to. We've gotten to this mindset to where we just mind our business. No, 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 no. If it's if it involves your loved ones who's who's change of behavior, then then it's no longer. I'm gonna mind my business. No, no, no. Ask them questions, and then for people who need to. Um, who are afraid to speak out, just know that you are not alone. I see you, I, I hear you. Like we see past all those posts on Facebook. It's like, we know. And so like know your work, like it is a brighter side on it. Like let go of that dead weight. Like that's, that is the message. Let go of that dead weight and you will thrive. Like right. look at my hair is thriving. My skin is so much better. I'm happy, I'm healthy. Like let it go, leave it behind. Absolutely. Gosh, what you said is extremely powerful. And, and, and like you mentioned, people who know you, your friends and stuff, they start picking up on the thing to watch out for the change of uh, change in behavior, because I can't imagine the situation where um, if someone, God forbid, chooses who's like, who was severely depressed, like you chooses to take their own life or, or, um, if, uh, if somebody loses their life in an abusive relationship, you know, I can't imagine the support system or family and friends on the outside, you know, would probably be beating themselves up saying, if I only, you know what I mean? If I only right. had if I only to, to yeah. step in and, 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 and intervene, they would be sitting right here, but. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I can't imagine that kind of guilt that would be that to me could trigger someone to have depression, right? If you yes, if you like your boss at least, you know, told you like I see what's going on, you know. I can't I can't imagine that. And like you said, I know we have this whole narrative of mind your own business, it doesn't matter, but this is somebody's like health, the like, you know, whole health that's like at, at, at risk, their mental health, like mentally, their, you know, physical health, everything. And then, like you said, you're uh, like you said, you also notice like your hair's thriving, your skin's better. You're you're just so much better once you let go of that that weight. It's just uh, I can't stop saying it. It's so important and and, and so, so crucial. So for you, did you guys ever, did you ever like turn to him and say like, um, because like you said, you knew based on how he grew up going through some things as well. Did you ever um, like turn to him and say like, I think you need to get help or maybe we need to get help together or did that ever cross or was kind of like, that's something he wouldn't be forced? Yeah, that, definitely. I. 
I was very um, blunt about, you know, what my issues were were with him. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I, I was definitely vocal about, yo, like you, you need therapy. Like, you know, you're not mentally, you're not mentally sound. And he knows he's not, like he knows his relationship with his mother is the reason why, you know, he struggles with women. So he is too aware of that. Uh, Cause he, he has, you know, admitted that like, so he, he is aware, but you know, that's a whole nother topic on itself in, in involving, you know, black men trying to get help in therapy. That's a whole nother, yes. whoo, that's a whole nother hour. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I was vocal. I, I even said to him, I said, you know, I, I have been, been good to you this entire time. I mean, you're pushing me away. I said, there's going to come a time in your life to where you're going to have nothing and nobody because you, you know, sat on the people that, you know, defended you the most. And yeah. sadly to say that that is like, it was slowly a trickle effect, you know, after our relationship ended, you know, he wasn't, you know, gaining as much success in the boxing world or with other women. They actually reached out to me. was like, is he crazy or am I crazy? No girl, he crazy. He crazy. So definitely. Right. So I know you're, you're big, like you said, you're big on telling, especially encouraging women, especially encouraging women of color to know their worth. What does that, what does that mean to you, that phrase? Cause I know I see you post about it a lot and, um, and it's one of those things where people, you know, older people will tell, you know, young people that all the time, you know, woman, you know, know your worth, man, know your worth. You know, they say it all the time, but, but it's easier said than done. So Very. when you think of that, what does that mean to you? What does that look like to you? Yeah. A person truly knows their worth. So a, a, a person who knows their worth um, is someone who, who knows what they deserve. Like, here's what I deserve. I deserve to be loved. You know, I deserve to be treated like this. Here are my list of things that I deserve. So a woman who knows her worth, if you je- if you jeopardize any of those, she, she's going to cut you off and she's going to let you know, like, you have to go because you're not, you know, giving me what I deserve. Th- this is my worth. And mm-hmm. so uh, for me, it's not even just about leaving, but if someone steps out of line, like if they talk to you in a disrespectful tone, approach them and say, you know, hey, I, I don't know where you're from, but you know what you just said to me is not how I deserve to be treated to. So if that behavior continues, then I'm going to have to leave because right. now you're you're jeopardizing my work. Right. So so yeah. that's what it means to to know your work, know what you deserve, and then demand it from people. Like mm. you have to d- demand what you deserve. That is knowing your work. Mm, absolutely, I agree a hundred percent, and I think you. I mean, it, it's it's really hard when you're coming out of you know an an abusive relationship to kind of build your self esteem. I can only imagine back up and your confidence level back up after that because of course the situation you were in unfortunately beat it down or maybe the person told you you were worthless you know or you're you're never gonna amount to anything and things like that. And you kind of people start to internalize and actually really start believing that and become their own worst critics. So I think that's really big so but for you like like you said thank god that you're out of it so for the future 5 10 15 years from now where where do you see yourself where do you want to go what do you want to do what oh what wow uh, for? 5 10 15 years from now uh, um, you're probably going to see my names on a billboard somewhere <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. i definitely plan to be very successful um i'll probably be a millionaire by the time the the ten year mark hits because I am so focused on my goals. Mm-hmm. Just to go into a, a couple different things, you know, I'm, I'm focusing on day trading. That's you know one of the things that I do, mm-hmm. and then building my businesses as far as you know my t shirt brand and you know my clothing line and then my boxing business. So definitely gonna water water all those seeds and watch them grow. So in the next five to ten years, you will know. <laughs> You'll see it. Um, you heard it here first on the Jack Cole show. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> like, oh, Naj, yep, Naj, I see you on Forbes and be like, Naj, yes. I'm going to bring up this clip and be like, you heard you it You are. Here. You were my, this is my first live interview. So thank you, Jaira. Thank you. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Setting well, the tone. Yes. <laughs> Setting the tone for sure. Yeah. No, I think that's, I think that's great. Have you um, considered, and I don't know, please tell me a little bit more about your, your t-shirt business actually. Cause like, have you, um, is it specifically kind of like 
people of color uh, phrases on the t-shirt or is it kind of gonna, is it gonna be boxing stuff? Is it gonna be domestic abuse? Or like what? So what yeah, as of right you? now, um, this is one of the t-shirts, which is uh, just the, you know, a black pride t-shirt, but uh, the t-shirt business is gonna be basically just quotes. Okay. Um, and then there may be like a small little Bible scripture in the corner to go with that quote. So if you wanna just read more up on it, but for example, one of the shirts that are in the making is a shirt that says, um, block his number and focus on your goals. And so when, once you wear that shirt, it's like, okay, that sets the tone. Like, okay, I'm not gonna worry about this boy today, I'm going to just focus on my goals. So definitely just, you know, motivational quotes and then maybe a little scripture to go with it. Right. Absolutely. So for you thus far, what has been the most, I know it's going to sound crazy, but go with me here. What has been the most rewarding thing so far since your journey of overcoming, you know, the, the, the abuse from finding your self-worth again, all of that stuff. What has been your biggest reward thus far, you would say? I would say my biggest reward is for the first time in my life, I can look in the mirror and know who I am. Mm. So it's like, I don't have to question, you know, who I am or where I'm headed. It's like, mm. I now know that I have my roadmap and I know there's going to be roadblocks, but it's like, I know my destination now. I know who I am. I know what I was meant to do. And I know that I want to inspire other people. And so I know I have that effect. So it's like, I now know who Naj is. Like Naj mm. is now more than just a nickname, but it's also a brand. And I just want to transfer that brand and energy, you know, back into the universe. Yes. Ooh, that was so powerful. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So finally, um, last but not least, for people who, you know, may have questions for you after the interview or want to reach you and learn more about you or, you know, buy a t-shirt, whatever, um, can you just go ahead and let us know a little bit about where they can go and get that information and um, all that jazz? Most definitely. So right now, my primary contact is through Instagram. Uh, my Instagram name is yo underscore underscore Naj, N-A-J. Um, if you get on, uh, the only thing you'll see now is just, you know, snippets of uh, my clothing brand being you know, brought in on by pictures, but I'm still doing boxing training. And uh, I recently just started doing a day trading, not teaching that yet. But if you do want to get some day trading tips and some fitness tips and also some nice style and some black girl magic on your page, definitely follow me. Um, and you can just um, shoot me a DM. I'm very responsive. And any questions, uh, I'll definitely be happy to answer. Awesome. Sounds great. I accidentally, I forgot it was two underscores, so I had to go fix it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I had it there and then you were like, underscore, underscore. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't even notice. I saw it. I didn't even notice. Yeah. So if you go back and watch the interview and you see my face go like, uh, <laughs> that's what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> that was a typo, but I fixed it. So like she said, you guys, um, her information is right under there. If you have any questions for her and want to learn a little bit more about her, definitely uh, follow her for sure. But thank you so much, Nash, for coming on the show today and sharing your story with us. Of course, we are we're rooting for you. Uh, we are here for you as well, for sure. And anybody who's going... Uh, Anybody who's in the situation or out of the situation, I know you can definitely reach out to Naj and she'd be more than happy to talk to you and just, you know, pray for you, encourage you and all that stuff. Because we definitely, especially as um, women in general, you know, we really need to just continue to support each other and, and be there for one another um, as well. And, and, and also men too, you know, I think a lot of the times, we we leave men um, we leave men kind of out of things, but I would love to have you back on the show for sure and to talk about specifically men, um, African American men and African men and you know men of color getting therapy and and getting help because in our community um, it's definitely one of those kind of stigma things where they you know putting it out there right in public yeah. that. They help or talking to an outsider about problems, you know, a lot of people of color 
find it silly and they they don't need it you know they yeah. just think it's a waste of money and time um and it, it really is this a stigma but mental health is 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 real and trauma is real like you said earlier in the show if you don't deal with that trauma you'll find it manifesting in your future mm -hmm. relationship so for sure so that was a really key point but thank you so so much for coming on the show today. I enjoyed you. Um, for those of you, if you're just now tuning in, unfortunately, we're at the end of the show, but don't worry because you can definitely watch this interview after and we'll have it on YouTube and I'll be sharing it on social media for you guys to watch it. So thank you all so much for tuning in. Again, this is the Jared Nicole Show every Tuesdays from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And I will see you guys uh, back here again next Tuesday. Bye. Thank now. you. Bye. Of course.